Cambodia was once cloaked with forests. This is what it looks like today. More than half of the country's trees have been clear-cut. Foreign appetites for red timbers are driving the destruction, and none is prized more than this, Siamese rosewood. In China, rosewood furniture has become a status symbol, the best cuts of wood selling for up to $80,000 a ton. Exports have also increased to the West, where it's used to make coffee tables and fancy guitars. This is where all it gets made in here? Okay. Huge demand has attracted criminal syndicates that will go to any length to protect their profits. As Cambodia's timber stocks run out, they have moved into a new frontier, national parks inside neighboring Thailand. Armed loggers are raising virgin swaths of forests that are also home to threatened species, including the Asian elephant, tigers, and bears. But they will be stopped if this man has anything to do with it. Buchai Pamli Sansamon is the director of Taplan National Park, part of a complex that has UNESCO World Heritage status. He let us accompany his rangers on an operation to flush out the loggers. Last year, seven Thai rangers were killed in gun battles with loggers. Captain Morricot and his men spend half of every month patrolling remote jungle trails plied by the loggers. See how dense it is in here, a lot of thickets, vines, but these guys just slide through like snakes. It's a little tricky for a big foreigner. One of the toughest parts about scrambling up these mountainsides is that everything you want to grab to pull yourself up with looks pretty much like this. Looks like we found a uh, smuggler's camp right up here. There's trash, cigarette packs, water bottles, tarps, everything's just discarded. Up ahead, Morikot recognizes a letter K carved into a tree. The marking belongs to a logger he's been chasing for months. The loggers have grown so brazen that nowadays they taunt the rangers on patrol. But the rangers keep hunting them, despite a stunning lack of resources. GPS <laughs> แล้วก็อาวุธปืนยังเก่าแล้วก็ล้าสมัยไปหน่อยลูกกระสุนปืนก็ไม่มีนี่ก็ไม่เพียงพอครับนี่คือหลักๆทุกคนเนี่ย
Have Thai Rangers or police ever come after you? Have you been shot at? Several years ago, the smuggler stepped on the landmine left over by the Khmer Rouge, but that hasn't stopped him. And over the last two or three years, it's just grown out of control. They're going in with AK-47s, M16s, hand grenades, detonators, all sorts of uh, war weapons that they can turn against the Rangers. Tim Redman works for Freeland, a U.S. government-funded outfit that's training the rangers to combat rosewood poachers. As this resource is becoming finite and it's becoming harder to find, the risks that the loggers are willing to take is increasing. How does the timber move from Thailand to Cambodia and onward to China? When they come out of the forest, they will have some middlemen waiting there with trucks or large vehicles to put the timber in and they're actually making false panels underneath the floor of these trucks under the beds of the pickup trucks and they're hiding it underneath and it all comes back to one person that I understand his name is Trey Piep and he's got the license to handle all of the timber from Cambodia and so pretty much all the roads come back to this one person. This remote corner of Cambodia is where smugglers who work inside Thailand bring their stolen timber and where we meet up with May Tatar, one of the best investigative journalists working in the country. With him is Uch Lang, an independent investigator who tracks illicit rosewood. I pretend to be the, like the uh, locking worker, yeah. and sometimes I cook for them. I sleep inside the jungle in order to get information and to get the in evidence. Cambodia is one of the highest rates of deforestation in the world. No one can do anything again. The, timber is water because uh, they just said the timber is belong to the people. is alive. You can say the king of the Rosewood king of the timber in Cambodia. Tri Piep was once an advisor to Prime Minister Hun Sen and maintains close ties with the first family. Critics say that official protection has allowed him to cut timber in Cambodia on an immense scale. It has also emboldened him to trade rosewood poached from Thailand. A recent investigation found that he allegedly made more than $220 million trafficking illegally logged rosewood over a three-year period. We headed to Phnom Penh, the capital, to confront Tri Piep and the Cambodian government. Cambodian forestry officials refused our request for an interview, but after several days of waiting, representatives from Tri Piep's company agreed to talk with us at a timber museum they're building. Tara tells us there's also a warehouse on the property where Siamese rosewood is stored. Tara, you've been trying to get in for more than five years? Five years. This is the first time? Yeah. I try to contact all people that I know how to assess them. People have been arrested for coming around here? <laughs> for sure. Even though me, if sometimes just arrive the get, they will arrest you already. At the museum entrance, we are met by Prak Vuti, a company spokesperson. The massive columns in the main hall are made of rosewood, which he insists was legally sourced. All of this wood are, it have license from government. So every piece is not only big, uh, small piece, it's only, it's all I have license from the government. I know some NGOs are saying that the government has bent the law to give your group access to this yes. timber. What do you say to them? We have uh, a lot of bad ideas from outside that's uh, calling that our company, especially Yong Nha Tri Piep, that cut down the tree for only the business. But the truly is not that. Maybe so, uh, all of the excuse is not true for our company. After a tour of the museum, we asked to see the company warehouse. That we have uh, over there is a swing, steaming room. What kind of wood is all of this here? This wood is ordinary wood. Yes. That uh, we modify it, that we cut it down like this, uh, a little bit paste. This is ordinary wood? Yes. But Vuti is lying. Most of the stacked planks and logs are in fact rosewood. When I press him on the origin of the wood, 
He gets nervous and offers to show us proof it was legally cut in Cambodia. None of this is coming from national park or protected no. areas. Yes, true. All of this is have a legal document. I have a document if you want to see it, I will you. The documents we look at confirm the planks are rosewood, as we suspected. Predictably, they all bear official stamps from the forestry department, attesting to their legality. Tri Pia plans to open his timber museum sometime next year, though we were told, without the slightest hint of irony, that the project could be delayed by a shortage of rosewood trunks. In the meantime, foreign demand for rosewood furniture is as high as ever. For Thailand's rangers, this ensures the battle against illegal logging in the jungle won't be over anytime soon. Chinese appetites are driving this trade, but we know that some of this timber ends up in the West, including in the United States. What do consumers need to know? Probably what most consumers don't understand in America when they're sitting there drinking their cup of coffee off their nice rosewood table is that that's probably come from an illegal source. And people have risked their lives for that timber, and I think there needs to be some due diligence by the consumers. Where did my table come from?